Watching the Mugen Train arc for a second time, this time in TV format, is exactly what I was hoping it was going to be. Something that would make me come out appreciating it even more than the first time. Adding in an opening and ending song, those after the credits gags, seeing a few new cuts throughout the episodes. Like, yes, last week will be the only drastically different episode of this arc because it further fleshed out what kind of started this arc to begin with. But it doesn't change the fact that I am glad to be re-watching it in a TV format. I mean, Demon Slayer is just too good not to watch a second time, a third time, hell, even maybe a seventh time. It's interesting because there's so many little moments surrounding this episode that when you consume it in a movie format and then go to discuss it with people, whether you're talking on Reddit, you're talking on Twitter, YouTube comment sections, you know, there's so many different things you may not want to discuss in the moment because you're only thinking of the big action set pieces or emotionally driven high points. But in episodes like these where, yeah, the action is definitely going to be talked about and rightfully so, you can also take a step back and talk about the idea of someone like Inosuke and his love for trains, which is so wholesomely just hilarious. The fact that he almost jumps out talking like it's God. You have the bento boxes having even more meaning given that we had the first episode of this arc where you see where he got all that, and to see just how hungry of a boy he truly was. To just really, I think my personal favorite point, which I'm expecting no one else is going to agree with this, that's kind of part of the fun of episodes like these. The ticket man, the person who has the ticket piercer and he basically is just doing it so he can sleep and die and see his family who are no longer alive. It's moments like those that a man like that and a character like that, they're not going to be something you're going to actively think about in a movie format past their initial scene because so much is going to happen and the momentum and the ball is going to keep moving. But in an episode where you can tell something's odd about him, you're saying, what is with this guy? Like, is he going to pierce a ticket and are they all going to die? Is he a demon? And when you see the reasons for what he was doing and why he was doing it, and how he's groveling on the floor to a hand, a severed hand, that's talking to him saying, just please let me sleep, he just wants to see his family once more. It's a pretty powerful moment, and you can see just how strong of a foe we're about to deal with in this arc, who can really turn the tides of, you go from seeing Rengoku take down not one, but two pretty impressive looking demons, the first of which one slice and it's done, the second is almost like a prey mantis insect-like beast, still very impressive, to then having him knocked out and seemingly questioning, is he ever going to wake up? I think what makes this arc so fun is like how quickly things can change, where you think this is it, this is going to be the main objective, the main foe, and then just things completely shift in a moment's notice like that. The action still is just, it's even more impressive a second time, I have to say. Rengoku is a character who is a mixture of like the most childlike energy you can possibly imagine to the most authority-driven father figure you can imagine. If you are scared, if you are in danger, that's Big Papa right there. He's going to keep you safe and he's going to show you who's boss. You start off with him offering to make Tanjiro his apprentice and he's like, this dude's a complete lunatic. But once you see him in action, they're basically worshipping him like he's a goddamn god, and honestly, rightfully so. The cult of Rengoku is something that everyone should worship, power to him. But still, it's interesting because he's such an interesting character that the idea that even with last week's episode, right, you know, we have like a taste of who he is and how everyone worships him in some way, right? Because the idea of the Demon Slayers and, you know, the highest rankings of them, like, they don't really get along, right? Because they all have different opinions and some might like others, but they're not gonna universally say one person's all that great. But Rengoku clearly is a different beast all in himself. And I really like that because he's someone who charms you. And even when you think he's gone too far off the deep end, he's too Looney Tunes, like this man needs to sit down. Maybe there's too much sugar in those bentos. He very quickly makes you say, you know what? There's something behind that energy that you kind of want to mirror because clearly he's living the best life possible. And the fact that he's not so silly that he just goofs off in the middle of action, the fact that he does get serious, he uses his flame abilities, and it is honestly amazing. I mean, one of my favorite things early on in the Demon Slayer anime was when Tanjiro was using like water spins and you saw like the water circles having flames just engulf the train because it's such a tight knit environment. There's no real place for the flames to escape, so it engulfs the entire train cart there. 
and it's pretty devastating. You're probably watching this episode if this is your first time saying, what the hell, do they even need these characters here? This boy's kicking ass and taking names. And the idea of dreams has always been something I've loved in especially horror series. That's why I love things like Nightmare on Elm Street. The idea of invading your dreams is something that's so interesting. But the thing that I think really separates this one is that rather than it just being a horrifying dream, it's actually your deepest desires. Tanjiro, someone who started this show off and he lost his family in the most brutal fashion. The one surviving member is someone who's trying to bite his head off, right? And once that's no longer an issue, everyone's trying to cut hers off. So to have him go back to his family being, yeah, tied up, we know in normal reality this ain't good, but for him, you start questioning, is it worth going back? Because would you rather die with your happiest of dreams or face reality once more. It's something that most people will probably naturally say, well, of course, go back to reality. You can make a great life. But for someone like Tandro, it's an interesting question. Would he naturally want to if he discovers the truth? And I love that kind of concept where you can tell dreams are going to be powerful and dangerous and relevant for this arc, but at the same time, you really start questioning, at least I know I do, how characters would then start responding. And it's even better a second time watching it now in the TV version after already experiencing the movie. And like I said, I'm not going to touch upon things that haven't happened yet because I know this is both like a rewatch slash fresh experience for two different parts of the Demon Slayer fandom. I just love how comedic it was and the fact that you can actually flesh out the bento boxes, which that's like literally how the movie starts pretty much. They get on the train and you just hear them saying delicious and you're thinking, what the hell, did he order that many bento boxes from the train? Like they must be really damn good. But it's kind of interesting how the simplest of ideas, something that last week's episode didn't need to touch upon, they didn't need to give that like grandmother and granddaughter kind of situation where they rewarded him and he bought up all their stock, but it kind of adds a bit more to that and really sells his character arc about being someone who cares about people first and foremost. He is a hungry boy and he will scream delicious at every possible moment, but he is a protector and he is without a doubt the most memorable character in this show, as of this arc at least for me. I really, really enjoy his character and I love both the opening and ending songs. I mean, song-wise, I might lean a little more towards the ending, but both of them are really well done. I wasn't sure how into the opening and ending they would go, because I heard they were going to add one for this arc, because given that it's only going to be a seven-episode arc before then we wait a week to kick into the Red Light Districts or Entertainment District arc, I wasn't sure if they're really going to put too much time into an opening and ending for it, but they really blew me away, I have to say. It was very, very well done, and it'll be interesting to see if they will be my favorites of basically the Demon Slayer of 2021 because who knows what the next opening and ending will look like. I might favor this one, but either way, very well done, I have to say. They could remake this arc again next year and I'd probably still watch it. Probably wouldn't cover it again, but you get my point. This shit's awesome. It's really well done. Best Boy Rengoku, the horrifyingly depressing ticket man, and just seeing characters like Inosuke worship the train like a goddamn god, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Great action, great sound, I mean the explosiveness inside the train really makes a good echo for those impacts. Let me know your thoughts though, whether it's your first time experiencing this arc or your second time like myself, let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.